good morning class. Then you are going to look at motion. The motion shall talk about what we call kinematics. And by the end of this lesson, you should be able to know types of motion. We will also give an example of motion. We shall talk about distance, displacement, speed, velocity, acceleration. Equations of motion. That is equations of motion. Now, when we say motion, is the change in position of an object. That is, when an object is at point A and it has moved to point B, then we said that. Motion has taken place. That is the continuous change in position of an object. Continuous change in position of an object is what we call motion. And I said under the motion you are looking at kinematics. Before motion can take place, force must be applied. But in kinematics, we are going to study only motion without involving the force causing the motion. So, kinematics is the study of motion. We are not considering the force causing the motion. We shall look at that one later. Now let's talk about types of motion. Types of motion. We have one, linear motion. Linear or what we call rectilinear. Rect Rectilinear motion, or the same as translational motion. And when we say linear motion, it's a type of motion on a straight line. Motion along a straight line is called linear motion. For example, if a car moves on a straight line from station A to station C, provided the motion that takes place on a straight line, we call it linear motion. Linear motion. Two. Oscillatory motion. Oscillatory motion is the to and flow type of motion. To and flow type of motion. That is what we call oscillatory motion. And a typical example of oscillatory motion is motion of a simple pendulum. When a small mass is suspended by the thread, and when you displace one end, you see that it will be moving to and fro. For example, if this is a small mass, when you displace it, it will be moving sideways. So we said that motion of a simple pendulum is a typical example of so motion of a simple pendulum is a typical example of oscillatory motion. Or motion of a liquid in a U-tube, when the liquid is filled in a U-tube, then the motion it undergoes is also a typical example of oscillatory motion. The to and flow type of motion. The third example of motion I want us to look at is projectile motion. Projectile motion. 
is a type of motion taking place by an object released in air. And a typical example is when a catapult is fired, the stone undergoes projectile motion. Or when a gun is fired, the bullet undergoes projectile motion. This it move and then it comes to rest due to the force of gravity. Projectile motion. But when you throw a tennis ball against a wall, the path taken by the ball is also a typical example of projectile motion. The next example of motion is rotational motion. Rotational motion. Rotational motion. This is the type of motion taking place about an axis. For example, Earth is rotating on this axis, giving us day and night. It's a typical example of rotational motion. Or the motion of a ceiling fan, the blaze of the fan, also undergoes rotational motion. It is rotating on its own axis. Rotation on its own as a motion on this one as a rotational motion. You also have circular motion. Circular motion. It's a type of motion taking place along a circular path or round a curve. An example is a car negotiating a curve, an example of circular motion. Or a planet orbiting around the sun also undergoes circular motion. Or an electron moving around the nucleus, look at an example of circular motion. An electron orbiting around the nucleus of an atom. Circular motion. Six. Let's also talk about random motion. Random motion. The type of motion which takes place without following any pattern at all. That is an irregular type of motion. A typical example is an ant searching for food. When an ant is searching for food, it has, it has no definite path. That is the motion do not follow any definite path. An example I said is an ant searching for food or molecules of gas in a container. The molecules move randomly, hitting the walls of the container, containing them. That is a typical example of random motion. Random motion. The other time I was teaching this, and somebody gave an example of random motion as the motion of a madman. <laughs> but of course, a madman do not undergo random motion anyway. But they know where they are going. But it's not all that scientific. Now we have discussed some types of motion. We are going to look at linear motion into a bit detail for now. Linear motion. And we shall suspend that of circular motion, projectile motion, rotational motion. We shall treat these ones into detail in our next subsequent videos. Now let's talk about linear motion. That's motion along a straight line. And under linear motion, we are going to discuss distance. Distance. Small letter S represents distance. When you see distance, 
is the interval between two points. If here is our point A and here is our point B, the interval between point A and B is what we call distance. And distance is a scalar quantity. And in distance, we don't consider direction. So it's a scalar quantity. And I hope you know that the SI unit of distance is meters. So interval between two points becomes distance. And I said distance is a scalar quantity. That means direction do not involve here. And the SI unit is meters. Let's also talk about displacement. Displacement, which I also use in mechanics, we use small letter S to represent displacement or distance. Displacement is also distance moved in a specified direction. For example, if I displace an object from A to B, distance I've moved from A to B in a direction from A to B, then we, we call this displacement. Displacement. That is, displacement will involve direction. And due to that, displacement is a vector quantity. And the SI unit is just like that of distance, also in meters. Distance is also in meters. Displacement is also in meters. Now, let's also talk about speed. Speed. Speed is the distance traveled with respect to time. Distance traveled with respect to time. To a personal. Distance traveled with respect to time. Distance traveled with respect to time. So speed represent distance traveled with respect to time. You can write speed to be equal to distance over time. And the S time unit of speed is also meters per second, written this way, or meters per second. And speed is a scalar quantity. Speed is a scalar quantity. It means that the direction is not needed. The speed covered by an object or a vehicle, we don't consider the direction. And due to that, speed becomes a vector quantity. Speed becomes a vector quantity. I'm sorry, a scalar quantity. Scalar quantity. Speed is a scalar quantity. Velocity. We use small letter V to represent velocity. And velocity is the rate of change of displacement. Velocity is the rate of change of displacement. Or distance moved with time in a specified direction. Distance moved by a body with time in a specified direction is called velocity or the rate of change of displacement moved with time. You can write velocity to be equal to displacement over time. Velocity is equal to displacement. Okay. So velocity, displacement over time. Velocity is not the same as speed. Speed is a scalar quantity, but velocity is a vector quantity. Velocity is a vector quantity. Because direction is involved. Displacement over time. Displacement over time. You also have what we call uniform velocity. Uniform velocity. 
when you say uniform velocity, it means when the velocity of a particular object do not change. We can, we can also call this one constant velocity. Constant velocity. It means the velocity of the object do not change. That is when the rate of change of displacement is constant. When the rate of change of displacement is constant. And if a vehicle is moving with 20 meters per second, that's this velocity, and it uses this velocity throughout the journey, then we said the vehicle or the car undergoing uniform velocity. Uniform velocity. And we can draw the graph of uniform velocity I'll draw a graph of say, velocity in meters per second against time in seconds. And we are going to have a straight line. And it is uniform. This is uniform velocity. And the gradient, the gradient or slope is equal to so here we have to plot a graph of displacement rather I'm sorry displacement over time so we have change in displacement over change in time to give you the uniform velocity and this graph is called displacement time graph displacement time graph and as we have uniform velocity we also have non-uniform velocity. For non-uniform velocity, it means the velocity is keeps on changing, keeping on changing. That is, a car moving at non-uniform velocity means it keep on changing its velocity from time to time. And the graph for non-uniform velocity, you get a curve uniform. So if we plot displacement, that is s in meters against time in seconds, and if we want to find a gradient like this, we have to draw a tangent, and then the slope of the tangent slope will be equal to the non-uniform velocity. You will get a curve, not a straight line, as uniform. So here will be non-uniform velocity. Okay. And we also have what we call instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity, right, velocity will be equal to dx over dt. That is velocity at a particular point in time. When a car is moving along the straight line, the velocity at a particular point in time. Let's say at 20 minutes, the car has reached here, 30 minutes, and the velocity at that particular point in time, the second, seconds, is what we call instantaneous velocity. And I want us to end here, and we shall continue our video in, uh, in our next video we shall continue. So you can contact me direct online Eric Wanti at Yahoo.com or you can call my number 020 Until we meet again. See, thank you very much.